I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're going to do part two of the recent... What, what, what am I calling it? That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Oh, I got to get into the build, right? No, no, this is a plenty long video. Screw you. I'm not, I'm not going to do the build till tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha, happy flying. The fucking... Yeah, okay. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. This is part two of my quadcopter build around this frame. This is really the whole build is an excuse to show you this frame, to tell you the truth. And some of you have asked why I'm so freaking excited about this frame. Well, I'm going to... Before we get back into part two of the build of this copter, I want to take just a couple minutes and address some of the questions that people asked about this frame. Uh, and the gist of the questions was this. Joshua is so freaking picky about every last thing. If he like loves this frame, what is it about this frame that he loves? And I got to tell you, it, for it's just the totality of the frame hit me that a lot of the, the different decisions a, a frame maker makes about weight versus durability, about small size for good handling versus larger size for easier, easier build. It just really struck me that the designer of this frame had balanced all of those things in a way that it was I thought was really good. So if we look at the frame, there isn't any single sort of killer feature about it. Like you look at an Armitan Chameleon and you look at the front end of that frame and you go, wow, that's really cool, right? There's nothing killer about it that you could point to, but just every little thing has been done right, I think. So uh, for example, we have five millimeter arms. Now that's a little bit heavier, but they're very strong arms and they use unidirectional carbon fiber for stiffness. So uh, my thinking is the unidirectional carbon fiber is stiffer, but also weaker in, in one direction. And by going with five millimeter, uh, then it's, it makes up a little bit for that. I've found these arms to be pretty strong and I gave a copy of this frame to a local test pilot who, uh, who just crashes and breaks everything <laughs> and he has not managed to break this one so the bottom seems really good the finish on it is really beautiful uh very smooth slightly beveled edges that's that's a very nice touch that the, the designer took it's a cosmetic touch but it did it is part of what appealed to me you may be looking here and going no that's not unidirectional carbon that's twill it's uh, and it's 3k twill and in this particular cut the the it's just 3k twill on the the outside just for looks but the inside is unidirectional carbon on the arms um, the way that they come together on the bottom is also really smart. You can see here that the four arms come together and they fully enclose the bottom. So there's no hollowness here where we could get these, these, uh, these are 1.5 millimeter plates on the bottom and 1.5 millimeter normally I would consider to be too thin for a bottom plate, um, uh, but they're doubled and they're completely enclosed the five millimeter arm. So really what we've got here is a five millimeter plus 1.5 plus 1.5, actually like just a solid bottom plate. But if you do need to change out an arm, it's just a matter of removing two screws and you're good to go. If you, you can also see a very clever thing that the designer did to minimize the number of screws. We've only got two screws here and those are the standoff screws, right? The standoff just right there. But those are also the same screws that hold the arms on. So we've really minimized that we've got eight screws, which is the right number for the for the standoffs and then the flight control stack and no more. So it's just a very clever, nice touch. One of the things that sort of struck me that, that the guy who designed this really knew what he was doing. Going to the side plates. Now, a, a frame with side plates is nothing new, uh, and, but the way that he's chosen to do these side plates really seems like a good thing to me. Um, the, the side plates lock in to the front and bottom, and so they provide stiffness. And what I can't really show you, uh, you have to really hold the frame and feel it, is how just incredibly stiff the frame is. Like you can take Frit and you can try to bend it. Now I'll pretend to bend it. Oh, see how stiff it is? Yeah, no, obviously that doesn't prove anything. It's really stiff. And the way these side plates lock in or design really helps with that. Any, any frame with side plates is going to have an additional stiffness. And that's also going to help in a front on impact, help avoid, you know, bending the standoffs and so forth. But unlike some of the frames, like the carbon, all carbon RC Coyote comes to mind. That's a fully enclosed carbon uh, body with side plates. And it's a pain in the butt 
if you have to bind your receiver or change channels on your push button video transmitter or just get in there for maintenance disassembling and it's, it's another one of the things that i complained about about the um the armitan armadillo uh it, so here we've got so, sort of the advantages of side plates uh, in terms of stiffness but without actually uh we can still get at the flight control stack pretty easily now I've complained about the um, the reflex frame. I said that that was too small of a frame and a little too hard to build. And this one, again, it, it sort of rides that line. It's almost to the point where it would be a little bit annoying to build, but it's just big enough and just roomy enough. You see, we've got a little bit of room back here in the back. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I'll give you your dignity. <laughs> you know, we got we got just enough room there that it's not a total pain in the butt to build, uh, but it's not huge and like you know, like for example, like an alien, which is just a well Cadillac of room there to build in, right? So it still flies nice and handles nice. Uh, there are two complaints that I have about it, and these complaints are being addressed because this design is not final. This was the prototype. Um, uh, one of the complaints is these cutouts for battery straps. They're not really cutouts for battery straps. This is not designed for top mount battery. It's designed for bottom mount battery. It's a racing frame. So these cutouts here are designed for zip ties for like a Unify or something on the top plate. And uh, you can see I've broken one of them. So that was feedback that I gave the designer. Uh, and what's one change that's being made is that these cutouts are going to be smaller, so you can still get zip ties in there, but they're less prone to breaking. The other thing is that for the prototype, I believe it was all cut out of unidirectional uh, carbon, and that the, if these plates were cut out of um, twill or 45 degree, or I don't know, I'm not a carbon guy, but if we were to cut this plate out of something different, then it would be stronger. So those are some changes that are being made. And also, and this, this is not going to change the camera look how the camera hangs off the front and i've complained about that so much in the past that i and yet i love the rest of this frame so freaking much that i'm willing to forgive it i i know I, you guys i don't know i just the heart wants what the heart wants so i know that there's a lot of racers out there who don't care about this they're flying frames and they like frames like this so be it you're going to be more likely to break uh, the, the camera than on some other types of frames. Certainly one thing you could do is you could use a Runcam Micro and a Micro is going to hang out less. And also we're doing a little bit of work. Uh, we're working on a version of the side plate. I say we, really he. I'm just being, I'm just complaining at him and he's making changes to the design. And then I say we do it. <laughs> but one of the changes that's being made is we're going to put a, a horizontal slot here. So if you want to, you can slide the camera back and get a little bit more protection, but you won't, you'll lose the ability to lock in the angle with this second screw here. Or if you need, you can see that you might not have enough room next to the, uh, the, the flight control stack to slide the camera back, depending on the size of the camera and so forth. So if you need to, you can slide the camera forward and lock in with the, with the uh, angle here, but you're gonna have a little bit less protection from impact. So it's sort of your choice. Any other suggestion that we came up with to try and make it better would have compromised some of the other aspects of the frame that I really like so much. So I guess the other thing that you could try to complain about is the antenna mount. You can see how I've mounted the antenna here. This is not ideal. Now it's got a hole here if you want your antenna sticking straight out the top. I do not like to mount my antenna that way because if the antenna is sticking straight out the top and then you come across with a branch or something, it just shears it right off. It breaks it off right here at the base. And you guys who have had that happen are nodding along, you know. And so I think uh, it was probably, it might've been Mr. Steele or one of those guys who I first saw start mounting it out the back. And this was a while ago. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's the right way to do it. From an RF perspective, this is a terrible way to do it, but who cares if you break your antenna, it doesn't have good RF either. So mounting it straight out the back, I originally had it on the underside of the plate. But the problem is that it is right in the prop line if you do that. So by mounting it on the top side of the plate, it gets it just barely out of the prop line. I would really love to come up with some kind of a 45 degree-ish mount that would let me do this. But uh, yeah, you know, that's something to work with. And I know many people, especially racers, you're going with things like a little linear whip antenna or the new Axie antenna with the, with the UFL or the IPEX connector on it. And I've seen people mounting them, you know, on the arms and whatnot. So maybe that's, that's, maybe that's, I'm using the wrong kind of antenna. Anyway, how much does it weigh? Hold on. 
Well, the frame designer is kicking me right now for not knowing the frame weight uh, off the top of my head. But this is 327 grams. And you can see this is not a lightweight build. That's a full-size camera. These are not light motors. So 327 grams like this, uh, it's a reasonably lightweight frame. It's not ultra light like a floss, but it's pretty lightweight. Uh, good durability, good handling, etc. Hey, I'll give you one more thing, a build tip for those of you who've stuck around. Uh, many of you are asking about how I mount my antennas. This is, in my opinion, the best way to mount your antennas, is off the arms like this. Anytime I've ever mounted my antennas coming off the top, they get, sh they get sheared off, they get broke, they get into the props. You'd think that being this close to the props, this would be worse, but it isn't. In my experience, maybe it's because the prop is blowing down and it's pushing it out. I don't know. Maybe it's because being in the arms like this, hang on, like that, yeah. Being in like this, it's harder for branches or whatever to hit the antenna and knock it into the props. But the bottom line is I have almost, I guess maybe once or twice, but way less than any other method I found in mounting the antennas. Putting a, putting a zip tie, basically, and you're like, oh, well, show us how to do it. It's not rocket science. You just take a zip tie and stick it on the arm. And then you run the antenna down. I've got a little bit of tape here and you just heat shrink it to the zip tie, just like you would do off the top plate. But this is vastly superior. And you may also say, well, isn't the RF performance worse because it's getting blocked by the frame? And I'm like, well, that's what you've got diversity for So You got two antennas and granted diversity would be a little better if both antennas were off the top. But hey, then if it's facing away from you, it's getting blocked by the frame too. So yeah, well, anyway, the bottom line is if the antenna gets chewed up by the prop or knocked off by a tree, then it's not working right. So this, this is how I'm mounting all my antennas. And I firmly believe that this is the best way to mount your antenna. So there's your little knowledge for those of you who didn't care about the frame. That's why I put it at the end, right? Yeah, anyway. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Oh, I got to get into the build, right? No, no, this is a plenty long video. Screw you. I'm not, I'm not going to do the build till tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha, happy flying.